So thank you everybody for coming. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about security, which is kind of a boring, mundane topic until we really understand its purpose, which is to improve our experience on the entire internet. And I come from 20 years of the trusted computing space. How do we put hardware security into things? How do we make your life simpler? And what's been fascinating is now combining those technologies with the technologies of blockchain. So the new subscriber has many needs. It's not just about keeping your one or two private keys on your Bitcoin account. You're gonna have keys for the Ferrari, keys for the Marriott hotel rooms, keys for all sorts of stuff. Like you're gonna want to lend somebody your house and only lend them your keys for an hour or two because they're gonna wanna stay in the hot tub which is completely driven by IOT stuff in somebody's smartphone. You can't like be giving your smartphone access to somebody to turn on the hot tub in your rental house. Like this is gonna get super complicated. So we need help. I mean, all of us need help with better access, better control of all these things people are giving us. Like we're hooking, I just came from CES. Trust me, they're gonna hook everything to your smartphone. But it's not just keys. It's about creating secure messages. So when you think about blockchain, it's not authentication. We're not logging into something, even though, yeah, we log into exchange accounts, like we log into AOL. By the way, I'll just riff here for a second. How many people use crypto to log into the crypto on their exchange account? Just think about that for a second. Like, you have a ledger or you have a wallet with keys in it. Can you use those keys to log into your exchange account? No, we use SMS two-factor authentication. Really? Really, the crypto guys aren't using crypto to log into crypto? You know, we have this really cool thing here in Bitcoin, it's called use. Use is gonna be cool. So I challenge everybody in the exchange space to make sure you can log on to an exchange using crypto. Just sort of fun. Let's check again in a year, see if anybody's done it. Oop, I pushed the button twice. Um, so the mission here is to simplify protection. How do we protect you from loss and from theft? Look, more crypto has been lost because, it's, because we lost it than it was because it was stolen. We don't know where to put our keys. We don't know where to back them up. So it's a really interesting challenge as we go down this process to make sure that the device we get, like don't buy our treasure off of eBay because somebody might have already set it up and you didn't know what you were doing. Like really, the hack was you bought a used ledger or treasure and it was pre-set up? That's like a pretty simple hack. So we think there's a real opportunity to move the ball forward. And Rivets is focused on delivering that. Now the cool thing is we have help. Industry spent $20 billion over the last 15 years to develop, standardize, and deploy hardware security in all of our devices. It's in the form of a secure enclave where Apple keeps the keys for Apple Pay. Keep that in mind. Apple doesn't trust the operating system for Apple Pay. They put the keys for Apple Pay in a secure hardware enclave. Why? Because they have extra time and money and nothing better to do. No, because they can't keep payment keys safe on the keychain. So the same thing is true across all of Android. We have inside the chipset, in something like three billion plus ARM processors today, a tamper resistant hardware security store for keys. We should use it. So Rivets is focused on how do we turn that technology on? How do we enable it? How do we provide it as a container to help you keep your relationships with services safe? So one of the challenges Oh my God, we can't trust one single vendor. What if those guys make a mistake? So recently we've had a little brouhaha with Intel in the course of the last couple years around Spectre and Meltdown. Inside their processor, they built a secure vault where you could process keys safely. And then it turns out, well, it wasn't really quite as secure as they thought it was because in mechanisms they used to like try and speed the chip up, they leaked some of the secrets. And so they're busily off fixing it. That's the other good thing about really big brands is they discover something screwed up. They're gonna have spent a couple billion dollars fixing the secure capabilities within the Intel processor. It will be better in the future, we hope. But what we've tried to do is to take an approach that says, we don't want one secure core, let's have two. 
And so we've recently partnered with Telefonica and we've done joint development and actually have patented some technology around a dual root of trust architecture where half of your private key is operated by the trusted execution environment and then your key is also protected and sealed by the SIM module in your handset. So two separate supply chains with redundancy providing the protection you need for your keys. And we're gonna go try and press this to their over 350 million subscribers so we give them a tamper-resistant, multiple root of trust hardware wallet at a consumer price point in every device. And if you're entertained, you can come to our booth back here today and we are showing the first implementations of an Ethereum wallet transaction done on a phone with a dual root of trust protection. So this is technology that's coming into operation. But there's so many other capabilities. In our existing phones, we have support for global platform trusted user interface. This is the ability to put an image on a screen. So again, we're showing something here where we've just actually launched it. You can take and replace your Google Authenticator with a Rivets Authenticator, and in that context, you actually have all the seed keys held in hardware, and we use trusted user interface if your phone supports it to display your six-digit code, which means on a fully rooted Google device. Com we put load any compromised software you want on it, we should be able to generate a two-factor authentication that couldn't be stolen by malware. It's like having an external YubiKey built into your phone. It is more secure and easier to use than the standard Google Authenticator you download. And so it's a good sort of simple way for people to begin to experience what trusted computing can be within your device. But keys, the problem we have with keys on the blockchain is when I use a key, and maybe I use the most secure vault that's possible, I've really taken care to assure that my private key is protected, and I do a transaction on the blockchain, when I look at the blockchain, while I have the immutable transaction that was done, we know that when I write something to the blockchain, it hasn't changed, but I have no way to know that the data on the chain was intended. You can't prove to me that he didn't steal my private key. So maybe I have Fort Knox protecting my keys. Maybe I wrote my keys on the back of a paper napkin. You can't tell by looking at the chain. We actually think there's real opportunity to change that going forward where policies need to be applied at the key level because you see in blockchain, there's no network. That's why they keep building private chains to build a network around the private chain. And so this is an opportunity to give us policy bound to a key so we can assert that this device in this condition with these controls, according to me, my, the owner of the key, the owner of the platform, the person who is at the center of all of blockchain, right, is the owner of the private key. Blockchain does nothing unless the owner of a private key says, do something. And so that owner can put those policies around their keys as they wish and incorporate that in the transactions that they execute. So it's really building a bridge but around this central player. Like we talk about a decentralized network, but in reality what's so cool about blockchain is we're moving from a world where a network service is in the middle surrounded by users, where we're the product, where we're being advertised to, to a world where it's a consumer in the middle surrounded by services which is where we're working today. We have like all sorts of passwords and keys. Like somebody help me manage this stuff. And so how do I have my collection of devices share my keys? Where are the enterprise controls? How do we add additional secure Oracle data for smart contracts? At the center of all of that is the owner's device and their protection. We're trying to provide the tools to enable that. This concept of a second signature on chain ultimately gives you the evidence of that, of that transaction. So not only do you want a hash of the immutable record on chain, but embedded in that immutable record, you would really love to have a second hash that tells you about the condition of the device and the system and the controls that were in place. Anybody who's dabbling around with STOs or or you know, or the concept of regulatory controlled tokens, knows that we're adding a second device. We're gonna add a control into the smart contract and verify the control before the transaction executes. These are the tools to assure that those controls are properly applied within a device. And you can add privacy. We can tokenize things like KYC and other controls so that you know they're performed, you just don't know who you are. It's an interesting model to accomplish. 
So once I help you put all of your identities in your device, well, that's a problem because I might lose my device. Now, there's a really good news thing here. The most important thing is if you lose your phone, you notice. Nine-tenths of the battle, if you go sit down inside a CISO, nine-tenths of the battle is finding out if there's a problem. Like they spend millions of dollars in observation of their networks just to find out, are we, are we being attacked? Is there a threat? They have all these false positives. They have no idea what's going on. It's a train wreck out there. On the other hand, have you ever seen how long it takes for a 14-year-old to notice how long it takes before they notice their phone is missing? It's like measured almost in nanoseconds. Like if it gets four or five inches away from the end of their arm, all of a sudden the screaming begins, right? It's losing your phone is something where you know that you've lost your phone. And so we think your collection of devices is your identity. So that when I lose a phone, my other devices can help me to recover my identity, my backup, my services that are part of that. And so we think this is a very important piece of bringing crypto into the mainstream. The new enterprise as well is you don't want to think about putting a fence around blockchain and running a private chain inside. You really want to start by putting a fence around the keys and let that decentralized network have its security bound directly into the nodes of the network. It's very important to understand that blockchain has no network. It's just nodes, right? You can always add or subtract another node from the network at any time. So you can't just sort of put a virtual fence around blockchain and check stuff. We have to add the controls at the level of the formation of the instruction. And so these are the foundations to the next generation of mobile security. How do we make it simpler and safer for us to operate? How do we provide a decentralized and distributed trust model? It's about securing messages and not authentication. It's about verifying policies and controls that are built in so that, for example, this key won't start the truck unless the person has a medical certificate on their commercial driver's license. Those become simple policies to build, policies that people will pay for, and ultimately assuring that the security to operate crypto, because it's different. We're today trying to take our legacy models of username and password and apply them to operating this incredibly new decentralized model of how we have keys. Think of it this way. When you do a 10 cent transaction in crypto, it's not that you just delivered 10 cents. As part of the delivery of 10 cents, you also delivered a public-private key relationship. You can come back three years later, spend another 10 cents with absolute proof that the same private key participated. So you can establish and open a relationship with a service purely with the action of a 10 cent transaction. There is no, please open an account, please type in your name, please do all these things. You have a private key, you're in control. You can build that relationship because identity is, integ is integral to the transaction. And that's what's so cool. That's what modernization of a transaction looks like with blockchain. We have to understand the primitives that are here and remember how those primitives work as we apply them to the use cases of the world. We have to provide a model that allows for enterprise controls. We're seeing this with security tokens. How do we have centralized policy but decentralized transactions? Provable controls on chain so that you can say that this person was in this condition when they did a transaction, that the owner controls their, their privacy. There's so many different levels around this, but fundamentally, it's policy or evidence at the transaction level, not at the whole enterprise level. So we're building a collection of partnerships in, in partnership with what we're doing with Telefonica. Actually, we put out a press release today. Wan Chain just recently joined our project. And we're very excited to continue to reach out to the community and bring those folks in who can help us to deliver this first experience on a mass market basis as to what crypto looks like. Fundamentally, Rivets is here to enable a very simple thing. In the same way that eventually we went from oh, get out the screwdriver and add a sound card to your PC in order to have a PC that plays multimedia. We want the concept of a device that just comes with crypto built in. This is taking advantage of the industry standard tools to build crypto in as a standard capability 
that runs on every platform, that gives every consumer the benefits and the new experiences that blockchain and crypto can enable in our digital subscriber lives. Thank you. All right, Stephen, thank you so much.